Hi guys, I'm Cassie and welcome to my kitchen. So today we're going to be making Japanese thick and fluffy pancakes. There are loads of different ways to make these. You can make a souffle pancake or you could make ones with the metal ring, but the souffle pancakes are really difficult to make and you don't want to have to go out and buy special equipment just to make pancakes. So I wanted to make a recipe that was a little bit more accessible and I found this really cool hack that a Japanese lady had come up with where instead of buying the metal ring you make it yourself using old milk cartons and I found that it actually worked really well so today the way that we're going to use that is going to be with um, a recipe that is a bit of a mixture of different types of pancakes and so it's not that souffle pancake where it's just like a melt in the mouth, um, spoon goes right through it kind of type. It's going to be a lot more cakey and it's like a really good texture. It's a really good recipe if you want to impress your friends or you want to go for those Sunday brunch vibes. So let's take a look. So first we're going to start off with 200 grams of our Japanese pre-made pancake mix. In Japanese that's hotto keiki instead of pancake. But if you don't have access to this specific type of mix, then let's have a look at what's inside. The main things you'll need are flour, sugar and baking powder. This will give us three pancakes. Next you want one egg and we're going to separate the whites from the yolk. Then you want 160 ml of milk, a few tablespoons of butter or margarine, about 50 grams of plain yogurt. Then you want some strawberries to decorate. And if you're feeling fancy, a bit of icing sugar to sprinkle over the top. Then go ahead and get your old milk carton. I'm using an almond milk carton for anyone who's interested. And your scissors. Here we want to open it nice and neatly. So I'm just going to cut off the top and the bottom. And then I'll be cutting down one of the sides. Once you've done the top and the bottom, cut open one of the sides and open it up. Now we want these to be as smooth as possible, so we don't want all these ridges in the way. So I'm going to cut off this top part and the bottom part where there are ridges. This is so that we get a nice smooth pancake around the side and there aren't any dents and bumps. Next we want to create some strips that are four centimeters wide, so go and grab your ruler. And I just marked one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom so that I could create a line. Um, if your pen doesn't work on the shiny surface, then you can just go ahead and use scissors to make an indent, but be very careful. And then you can use the scissors to score a line so that you can follow this and cut it up later. Once you've gone ahead and cut it all up, then you should have six shiny strips like this and we're going to start putting them together. So grab your tiny cute Japanese stapler and get to work. I recommend stapling it so that the smooth side is on the inside of the rings so that we can again avoid any lumps and bumps on the pancakes. Once you've put your two strips together, it's time to go ahead and put them into a ring. We want our homemade Japanese pancake molds to be about 10 centimeters in diameter. Do this for your other four pieces and you'll have three rings ready to go. So now it's time to get on to how to make these Japanese fluffy pancakes. Go ahead and grab your measuring jug and milk or milk substitute. I'm using soy milk, but you don't have to. And measure out 160 milliliters of milk. Here I actually only used 120, but the mixture was a bit dry, so I recommend 160. Then we're gonna measure our yogurt using the lid as a little plate here and we want to get 50 grams of yogurt um, I ended up with 51 grams but I figured as I was scraping it off then I'd lose that extra one gram but you can be a little bit more efficient go ahead and add that to your milk and clean off your spoon as a little yogurty snack in between and now it's time to crack the egg. We're going to be cracking the white into the bowl and the yolk into the milk and yogurt mixture. So let's get cracking. 
When I crack eggs, I like to use the eggshells as a little cup and I just keep pouring the egg back and forth between the two parts of the eggshell. And then at the end, when there's a little bit of white that gets a bit stuck, then I can just use that sharp edge of the eggshell to scrape it off. Then we're going to pop the egg yolk into our milk and yogurt mixture and mix it up. I'm going to grab my pancake mix and because I'm in Japan this is usually separated into 200 gram packets so I'm just going to grab one of these packets and empty the whole thing into the bowl. Once we've done that we're going to add the milky eggy mixture to our flour a little bit at a time. We don't want to create any lumps so we're just doing it a little bit at a time but if you don't really mind your lumps and you don't really mind that coming out in the texture then you can just dump it all in and whisk it all up. Um, as you can see, this, uh, this version takes a little bit more time, but I think the texture at the end is worth it. Now here you can see that after having only added 120 milliliters of milk, that it's still pretty thick and we want it to be a little bit smoother, especially seeing as we're going to add in the whipped egg whites later. So I ended up adding quite a bit more milk. So I've added that at the beginning of this, but so basically in, in the first place, you should add 160 milliliters of milk, not 120 already. But if you're ever finding it a bit dry, then just add a little bit more milk. And if you're finding it a little bit too runny, then you can add some more flour. In the end, we want the mixture to be nice and gloopy, so it's still sticking a bit to the fork, but nice and smooth and a little bit runny. Then you want to go and grab your separated egg whites and your whisk. And I used a pretty terrible bowl for this. I would recommend a bigger bowl with more closed in sides because as you might be able to see, there's a little bit that's flying about. Um, I made a little bit of a mess with it, but this was all I had at the time, so that's what I used. Now I was thinking of leaving this part in real time so that I could show you how long it takes to whisk up the eggs, but no one really wants to see that. So I'm just going to tell you that it takes about three minutes and you've got to just hold it and keep going and keep going. You can over whisk eggs, so be a little bit careful, but basically we want to keep going until stiff peaks are forming and you can see these ridges that are created by the whisk itself. And when you pick up the bowl, you should basically be able to put it upside down um, and not have everything fall out. That's how stiff we want these to be. Like you're making a meringue. Then we're gonna combine our two mixtures using a rubber spatula. And we're going to carefully, carefully fold in these egg whites because we've just spent all that time bringing in all that air. And so we don't want to just whisk it up suddenly and lose all of the air by putting it in too quickly. So you want to fold it in gently and carefully. This is a little bit difficult with how thick the mixture is. So if you want to make it a little bit thinner, then you can add some more milk to this. But I kind of like how cakey the pancakes ended up this way. So that part is up to you. You want to keep doing this until it's nicely combined and you can't see any bits of white. And basically it's going to look a little bit goopy, a little bit flexible and almost bouncy. Then you want to get your butter or margarine. I've already cut a little piece off here and I'm just gonna use this stick to rub it around the inside of our rings. Now you can use parchment or baking paper if you don't really like the idea of using the inside of the carton or you don't want it to touch the staples, that's fine. But you'll have to cut it up so that it's exactly the right shape and everything and I'm lazy so I just use some butter. And I found that this works really well in being able to just slide off the ring at the end. Then with that butter that I was holding in my hand, I've just popped it straight into the pot and I've put the pot onto low heat. We don't want the butter to get too foamy, so I've left it on a really low heat 
and I'm just trying to coat the entirety of the bottom of the pan. Yes, I am using a chopstick, sorry, it's the first thing that I grabbed. A spatula or anything else will work just as fine. Now put your pancake molds into the pan and start putting your mixture straight in. We want to keep this quite level. Don't bring it right up to the top because then they will start overflowing. With the dimensions and amounts that I've specified, this should be fine and you shouldn't be ending up with it flowing up to the top if you've got three rings. Now here we can see really sadly that the mixture is starting to overflow from the bottom and that is because sadly my camera died and for like half an hour whilst I recharged it then I just left the rings soaking in butter. Just don't be stupid and leave them soaking in butter like I did. Once everything is ready then pop the lid on and leave everything to steam for 8 minutes. Once your eight minutes is up, it's time to grab your spatula and a little bit of butter and see how these bad boys are doing. This bit is pretty tricky, so be really careful of your hands if you're doing it the same way that I am. And your pancake should have risen right to the very top of your homemade pancake molds. Put your bit of butter in and it's time to confidently flip your pancake back into the pan. Once you've flipped all your pancakes, it's time to put the lid back on and wait another 8 minutes on really low heat. Once the 8 minutes is up, grab your spatula again and let's see how thick and fluffy these Japanese pancakes really are. Seeing as we buttered our pancake molds, they should just slide right off and Oh, look at that. That is not your ordinary pancake. Then it's time to put this thick and fluffy pancake where it belongs, on a plate. Then grab your icing sugar and start generously sprinkling it on. I really wish I'd had a black background so that we could see the snowy icing sugar falling onto the thick and fluffy pancake, but oh well. Then get your strawberries. I've cut mine up into little chunks, but I'll be using some whole ones as well for decoration. Of course, you can use whatever toppings you want, but I've just gone for the good old strawberries and sugar. Now that we've finished making it look all pretty, it's time for the important part, the taste test. As you can see, that is a very thick pancake and it looks pretty much like a cake that we made in a pan. So I would say that is a thick and fluffy pancake. The texture is a lot more thick and spongy than a regular pancake. But this is definitely something that's going to fill me up for my Sunday brunch. So there you have it, Japanese thick and fluffy pancakes. These were definitely the more cakey type as opposed to the souffle type. One day I will try and conquer those souffle pancakes, but for now these ones work perfectly for me. I've had way too many pancakes today, so I won't be making them for a little while, but I hope that you guys can. And if you find any tips and tricks whilst you're making this recipe, then let me know in the comments below, especially if you find out how to flip it without the pancake going everywhere. Otherwise, if you have any questions about Japanese cooking and you just can't seem to find anything about it online, then let me know and I'll see if I can do some research in Japanese and maybe incorporate it into my next video, or at least just answer your question. If you liked what you saw today, then hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye!